Da-da-dun, da-da-dun. What a trade here in the NHL. Big day for the Pittsburgh Penguins as they start off by trading John Marino to the New Jersey Devils for Ty Smith and a third round pick. Later on in the day, just a few minutes ago, acquiring Jeff Petrie and Ryan Paling from the Montreal Canadiens in exchange for Marcus Pedersen and a draft pick. Now, the draft pick hasn't been named yet, uh, hasn't been, uh, uh, I guess, uh, explained yet whether there's going to be uh, qualifications to it or if there's going to be a condition in uh, regard to that. But we can, oh, here it is. Kevin Weeks just reporting a 2023 th- uh, fourth round pick. So Jeff Petrie and Ryan Paling going to Pittsburgh for Mike Matheson and a fourth round pick now let's start breaking this down right now breaking news in the nhl let's look at this okay so jeff petrie is going to the montreal canadians jeff petrie he is definitely a good defenseman but the problem is he's three more years at almost at what 6.25 million he is a veteran offensive defenseman who loves to shoot the puck and scores quite often he's in the 90th percentile for goals per 60 Decent transition player and a strong rush defender. Keep him off the power play, though, because many people think he's like some sort of power play specialist or something. Not really. The man's in the eighth percentile for the power play. Strong even strength offense, draws penalties, good finishing, plays against pretty high levels, decent levels of competition. But his even strength defense does leave a little bit to be desired, a little below average, and he's not a special teams guy. He's an even strength scoring D man, veteran offensive defenseman, just as Jay Fresh puts it. Now, Ryan Paling, the Canadians also trade to Pittsburgh. Not a huge fan of Ryan Paling. I've always wanted him to succeed, but 11th percentile for wins above replacement, decent offense, not good defense. Uh, not really a scorer, draws some penalties, not really great in any regard. There's He's a young depth forward. That's all it is. Former first round pick who I remember a lot of people went crazy when he got drafted. Wow, he dropped. This is going to be good. All that did not end up working out too, too well for the Canadians. And they end up trading him for Mike Matheson. Now, I think Mike Matheson gets a lot of flack because he's such a high draft pick. And the Canadians, I think uh, the Penguins, I think paid a lot to get him initially. But he has really put it together for the Pens last season in a second pairing role. He uses his speed to carry the puck in transition and creates rush opportunities, but he's decent enough defensively to cover when things go south. Solid offense, one percentile higher than uh, defense for than Petrie in defense. Goals per 60 is great. Primary assists per 60 is really impressive, actually. His finishing is solid. He draws an above average number of penalties. And his competition and teammates slightly below average. But all in all, projected wins above re- 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 replacement percentile is 70%. So the Penguins essentially clear cap space. So they trade away Marino to bring in a younger D-man, a prospect. A bit of a problem in the logjam. But they made that money essentially to acquire Jeff Petrie. So going back to the stream here, if you're just joining us here as uh, we bring in some of the comments next season, we might be seeing a Dumoulin Latang first pairing. Frank, thank you. Breaking news. Always happy to break the news here on the channel. Just in the middle of editing franchise mode. Breaking trade. I love it. On top of everything, right on. Merci beaucoup, Patrick. Always happy to help. So the return on Petrie and Paling is Mike Matheson and a 2023 fourth round pick. Welcome to Michael and Isa. Always great to have you in the chat. Jim Matheson and a fourth. Yes, that is the return for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, a 2023 fourth round pick. So the percent, the, the, the advanced stats tell me that it's a pretty solid trade. The Penguins will improve their defense. Uh, well, not their defense, but they'll improve their wins above replacement slightly. And at the end of the day, you play to win. You play to win the game. So if Petrie is causing more wins, then that's good. Now, but here's the thing. Mike Matheson, again, I think he got a lot of flack in Pittsburgh. He is a very, very, I don't know if underrated is the word, but like flying under the radar kind of guy. Here are the advanced analytics, the microstats for Mike Matheson, who will now be in the Montreal Canadiens for the next, what, three or four years? Rush offense, in-zone offense, zone entries, entry defense, 92nd percentile for denial rate, entry defense, possession entry rate, 96%. Even his worst numbers are in the 40s, 50s, 60s. I am actually pretty impressed with Mike Matheson the more I look at him here, and I am happy to bring him on board as a Montreal Canadiens fan. At the same time, I'm also happy to be offloading the contract of Jeff Petrie. I like Jeff Petrie, but he wanted to go to his American market. He got it. 
three more years at a cap of 6.25 as a 34 year old. I think that contract's going to go down. Modified no trade clause. He has a full no move clause. Uh, you know, it's going to be a bit difficult for Pittsburgh in 2024 and 25. They have a lot of money wrapped up in these in these uh, older players. And they're really going to have to manage things very carefully. So yeah, Penn's fan just wondering what's going on. Jay Fresh updated those, <laughs> updated those logos quick. You better believe it. So if you are just joining us again last, I won't go through all the analytics again, but the Montreal Canadiens trading Jeff Petrie, a very solid offensive defenseman, veteran offensive defenseman who does make a lot of money for three more years though, and Ryan Paling, the depth forward, trading him, trading them to the Pittsburgh Penguins for Mike Mathers, Matheson and a 2023 fourth round pick. So let me go back to cap friendly here. Let me refresh the Pittsburgh, the uh, Jeff, page of Jeff Petrie. It brings me to the Canadians. Yes, uh, to the Penguins, excuse me. So the Penguins, after moving out Marino and bringing in Petrie, have 1.2 million left to play with. And uh, yeah, it's going to be tough in 2023 24 because a lot of money's tied up in these other guys. Like Zucker's not going to be coming back. Um, Kasperi Kapanen, even, I'm not sure what's up with him. I'd be surprised if he comes back this year. They still have to clear up some more money. Their blue line is costing them a lot, and it's uh, it's an old blue line. Their top three D-men are making, hold on, 6.25 plus 6.1 plus 4.1. They're making an average of about $5.5 million each with an average age of 33. That's difficult for your top three D-men. Pedersen, I like Marcus Pedersen. He'll probably stay at this point, but that's a lot of money on the Penguins' blue line. I love the cap hits of Malkin, of Rust, of all that. But to move out Marino to bring in Petrie, who's a lot older, making more money, I'm not sure if I love the move for the Penguins. As an offensive defenseman, he does a lot of things that other players don't. He blocks a lot more and hits a lot more than the average offensive defenseman. But last season, 107 giveaways to just 12 takeaways. Tough numbers, tough numbers, I do have to say. Let me see the uh, Corsi. Is it above 50? Uh, in his career, it's at 50.2. His last few years have been a bit difficult. Meanwhile, Mike Matheson, who's now on the Canadians, he is a he's a big boy. He definitely throws a lot of hits out there. Uh, 97 and 74. Yeah, he's good for a hit and a block per night. His Corsi numbers are also in his career below 50, but the last couple of years above 50. And salary cap wise for the Canadians, they're in a good position now. They dump Jeff Petrie, who gives them, you know, they don't need to do much this season, but they have the ability to move around more moving forward. Modified no trade clause, four more years of Mike Matheson. That's a digestible number for the Canadians, who now have 2.3 million to play with. And that is, that's also before, I don't know, is Drew Way on LTIR? Is Paul Byron going to be on LTIR? Whatever, who's healthy, who's what? But the Canadians have their team right now. They can, they're can they not going for anything much. The Canadians are happy to let Paul Byron play out this season, then walk next year, and that's an extra $3 million right there. Dadnov going to be moved to free at the trade deadline probably. Bang, $5 million there. The Canadians are in a good cap situation and just freed up, what, almost $2 million on uh, on moving out Jeff Petrie. And they, you know, Paling moves out. He wasn't going to probably be doing much or sticking around for much longer. Uh, I'm okay with this. I think for the Canadians, I would have liked to get a bit more just because Petrie at his height was worth a lot more, but that's kind of what he's worth at the moment. Some saying, you know, a rare Kent L it wasn't the greatest trade in terms of what Petrie could have been at one point, but I do understand that this is the value of Petrie today and paling. I'm not too heartbroken to be, to be parting ways with, uh, with, um, paling. I do like Matheson a lot. I think he gets a lot of flack. From a Pittsburgh cap perspective, next year UFAs are Zucker, Jerry, and Dumoulin. That's going to be a bit difficult for them. Welcome to Yane in here as well. Post-franchise, that's coming soon. That is coming soon. That's going to be on Monday, actually. Franchise mode coming on Monday. Let me pull up Ryan Paling on on hockey reference here. As we saw from the Jay Fresh uh, graphic, he is in that 11th percentile, so not ideal. Let me see. I'm just pulling up the numbers for him here. Let me show them to you. Uh, yeah, I, you know, he came as a big boy uh, in terms of, uh, I don't know, regard. 25th overall pick. A lot of people thought he was going to be a late teens pick, I thought. Kane's got a bit of a steal in that regard. People were excited. 
You know, he had that hat trick in his NHL debut, but two points in 27 games the year after. In his career, he has 22 points in 85 games. Um, averages about close to a hit a game, a block close to every other game. Uh, his takeaways and giveaways, not know, it's low ice time as well, but more giveaways than takeaways, although slightly, just slightly in that regard. Uh, of course, not a lot of information to go off the advanced stats. That's why I'm kind of going off of Jay Fresh, who, you know, he's not a guy who contributes a lot to your wins. And uh, I guess the Canes were just ready to cut ties with him. He will be okay on the Penguins. You know, the Penguins have a knack of taking these guys like Alex Nylander and Evan Rodriguez and Zach Aston Reese, whoever else, and turning them into players. So I think, if anything, this, is gonna, this deal will help Paling the most. But, you know, to move on from Jeff Petrie, he had a, some great years here in Montreal. Getting him for a second round pick was in a, for two seconds. Uh, no, for just a second and a fourth, that was an amazing trade from Mark Bergman, one of his better ones in his career. He ends up spending from 2014-15, the second half, all the way to the end of 2022 with the Canadians. He was a big piece for the Habs, but to dump that salary, three more years of it, and bring on uh, a a sort of lateral move in defense but to shed a lot of cap yeah i'm definitely happy with that it's it's too bad the value couldn't have been more since it's you know we're not trading petrie when he got like norris votes at the end of last season yeah he was 13th in norris voting in 2021 when he scored 42 points in 55 games so it's unfortunate that we're not capitalizing on that value but still so the penguins doomlin might be gone after this for sure it's gonna be tough to try and make it work as a pens fan here jeremy is not a fan of this trade he really liked matheson so i think petrie will do well in with the pit with the penguins uh again let's bring up now we have more people in here let's bring up the numbers one more time jeff petrie i think he'll do well with the penguins it's more that can he keep it up as he gets to 35 36 37 years of age high offensive numbers there in the 79th percentile projected wins above replacement He's not a special teams guy. He hasn't been going to the power play at all recently for the Canadians. Penalty kill, not so hot. Winning wins above replacement percentile. He was close to the hundredth, and he's gone down to the, you know around 79, 80 over that time. Goals per 60, he's up there. Primary assist, he's up there. He draws penalties, but even strength defense, he's uh, slightly below average-ish. Ryan Paling, he's just a depth forward toss-in who the Penguins will try to you know take as a reclamation project. 11th percentile for projected wins above replacement. Not anything that you're really writing home about. But Matheson, on the other hand, off to refresh for a moment, just get Matheson. He's in the 70th percentile, which is nine percentiles lesser than Petrie, but he's younger, signed for one year longer, and making almost two million less. So the more I look at this, I think I like it a bit more for the Canadians. I was a bit, I was not as much of a fan when I first saw the deal. Yeah, even though I was happy to move on from Petrie, you know, he did, he wanted to move on, and we now's not a, a horrible time to move on from him. The goals per sixty, primary assists per sixty, even strength offense, all that is very respectable. Other numbers are around average, but slightly below average. Even strength defense is one percentile higher than Jeff Petrie even. So he uses his speed to carry the puck in transition. He creates rush opportunities and he's decent enough defensively to cover when things go south. The advanced micro stats, if you're curious to see see these as well, in zone offense, rush offense, zone entries, entry defense, 92nd percentile for denial rate, zone exits, 85th for possession exit rate, 89th for carry exits. You know, some of these numbers may mean nothing to you, but even if they do mean nothing to you, just look, nothing's lower than 40 sixth percentile which is d zone retrievals and it goes all the way up to the 96th percentile so he's not a bad defenseman at all that's why he getting paid this money and i like him for the canadians as a canadians fan so yes he can be a liability at times for sure for sure i'm not going to go ahead and say that he's amazing but when you look at the micro stats he's not much different than petrie i don't think you know yeah he'll have a couple goals on odd man rushes for sure i'm not going to say that he's amazing uh offensively and crazy like that but his defense seems to be just as much in uh in the same category as jeff petrie's so to dump money for you know to get a younger guy who's cheaper who's doing pretty much the same thing i'm okay with that 
I don't hate it. So for those of you who are saying like Richard says that he hates it, I'm curious to discuss with all of you in here. Now we're at 75. Welcome all of you to the channel. If you're new, we do real hockey. We do virtual hockey, career franchise mode, simulation, Slavkovsky sim, right sim, NHL 22 franchise mode, lots of stuff that I'm sure you'd love to see. So take a minute to check out the channel. I'm a Pens fan, so I'm happy to see him go. Absolutely. You know, and something to be said about that. When you see a guy every day, familiarity breeds contempt sometimes, right? So when you see this guy all the time and, you know, you get sick of him and he does a little thing that uh, that you that you become kind of calloused to. Yeah, I understand that for sure. The Marino trade. Now, I don't mind the Marino trade, says Richard. He wanted a forward. I don't know if I like the Marino trade for the Penguins. They get Ty Smith, another left handed defenseman, more of a logjam in Pittsburgh defense. Uh, yeah, and they're not done yet. They have nine NHLers on defense, says Andrew. So they've made them they've given themselves a lot of people to, to have to figure out on that blue line. Matheson will drive you nuts just wait. Yeah, I, I'm sure he will sometimes, but I'm glad that the Canadians aren't in a position that they have to really do much. Instead of letting Petrie and his contract run out, we can just go ahead and get something for him. And I'm not saying he's going to, Matheson's going to be amazing, just that it seems like it's a pretty lateral move defensively, a little less offense, pretty even defense, and it's younger, it's cheaper, and you know what? I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Uh, you know what? I got to say, I think Marino's way better. Uh, Adam, and I'll show you why. You say they're same on the, they're probably the same on the ice, but I'll show you the advanced numbers here. Ty Smith in the sixth percentile of projected wins above replacement, and John Marino in the 78th, so and the 80th for even strength offense. So he is the reason for a lot more wins, and he is... That's a good contract as well. 25 years old, 4.4 million for five years. I don't know if I like the Penguins' moves today. No, I don't know if I like the, the moves for them today. But I do, yeah, good point from Matthew here. I do trust Kent Hughes. The Habs are finally doing their homework before making decisions. Just that I'm, I don't know, I'm still a bit confused on the Penguins. Like I said, they have 1.2 million to play with. They have eight defensemen who can play in the NHL. Um, Ty Smith, I don't know if he's going to be happy in a third line, a third pair role. But, you know, well, I don't know. He's being rushed a bit in New Jersey. He was playing a lot of top four minutes. Maybe it's good that he takes a step back. And if Dumoulin walks, then it's not bad to have a good replacement in the pipeline. It's just that as well with Pierre-Olivier Joseph in the system. Pio Joseph, he's 23. He's going to want to get some playing time. Xavier Wallet signed on for two years. The Penguins have a lot of defense. So it's going to be interesting. It is certainly going to be interesting. Reno is good. Uh, yeah, he was fun to watch. They were supposed to be clearing cap for forwards. Yeah, and, you know, Kasperi Kapanen is still an RFA, unsigned RFA. So the the Petrie move, a little bit perplexing in that regard. Yeah, so that, that eight, include P.O. Joseph, make that nine, who is waiver eligible and ready. So the, the Penguins are in a very difficult situation right now with so many defensemen that could be NHL caliber. With all that, they add in a guy who's more expensive than Matheson, older than Matheson and a bit more restrictive as well with the, what, he has a 15 team, no trade clause, but you know, a good point here from Renault, Ryan Paling, watch him put up 60 plus points for Pittsburgh and play top six, nine, uh, as a, as a centerman, you know, that's the type of thing that Penguins do with Evan Rodriguez and guys like that. So it's good move for Petrie and that he gets his American market. It's a good move for Paling that he gets a little bit more life. He's not going to be, uh, kind of fighting in Laval or whatever, trying to get NHL minutes. And it's a good move for Matheson, well, for the Canadians to get Matheson because for all those reasons that I previously just said, what I don't like for the Penguins is moving Marino. And to move Marino to take on Petrie makes that Marino move even a little harder to digest, in my opinion. So maybe if, if we could find some other thoughts here on Twitter, some of the insiders. Seems like a huge dub for Pittsburgh says tactics. Uh, what else do we see out here? We saw that it was a fourth round pick in 2023 of the Penguins will be trading to the Canadians. Uh, unsigned RFAs in the Canadians still include Doc, Montembeau, and Primo with a projected roster of 21 on IR. So the Canadians also need to move Petrie to try and get some money freed up. That $2 million they freed up is also good long-term, but, you know, short-term, we got to sign those RFAs. So I think I see this as the more I think about it, the more I think the Canadians got a very solid deal here. Not seeing a lot, though, in the, uh, in the reactions on Twitter, so I'll leave it be there. 
I'll wait for any more of your reactions here before we close out this live stream. Just some breaking news. Yeah, Ryan Paling was a first-round pick, 25th overall when he was drafted. Andrew, from a Penn's fan perspective, they turned, or from a Penguins perspective, they turned Matheson into his 21-year-old version in Smith, and they turned Reno into his 34-old version in Petrie. That's interesting. Yeah, I see that. Ty Smith will do well in the Penguins moving forward, and I'm sure in a few years it's going to be fine. But to say that you go from Marino to uh smith uh and smith he's not gonna be ready just yet and then you bring in petrie you dump marino to get petrie it feels a bit perplexing it does feel a little bit perplexing so i'll take any more of your thoughts on this as we close out again thank you to everyone who's taking the time to listen over here breaking news in the nhl is jeff petrie and ryan paling go to the pittsburgh penguins for uh, Mike Matheson and a 2023 fourth round pick. If you're new to the channel, take a second to look around. I'm sure you'd enjoy it around here. There's career simulations, NHL 22, real life NHL uh, coverage of the draft, free agency, trade deadline, breaking news. So be sure that you're subscribed to receive all breaking news, reactions, and analysis. And I'm sure if you enjoy hockey, you'll enjoy the career simulations and the NHL 22 franchise mode. So yeah, we'll enjoy the uh, Matheson experience. Absolutely. We will absolutely do that. So thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join in here. I think those are all of my thoughts. I will do my best to stay awesome. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that very much. I'll close out just since we're still at 80 people. I'll close out for any of you looking at the advanced analytics, just quickly covering it for a third time. Jeff Petrie, 48, projected overall 79, 79th, excuse me, 48 on defense. And you go and get Matheson, who's 70th, 9 percentile lower, but 1 percentile higher on even strength defense. He has great offense, but he's not a special teams guy. While Matheson, we have no information on the special teams, but he's also okay uh, offensively. He's up there because things, you know, maybe you call it luck, whatever you want. But for cheaper, younger, signed one more year, allows the Canadians to sign Doc, to sign Montambo, Primo. Here are the advanced analytics as well, zone entries, all that. I am happy to take a small hit offensively and maybe even defensively to be able to make those other moves and be free in the next two, three years. So that's a big plus for them. Adam, do you think Pickering will be ready to play this year? Honestly, even if he is, I don't think the Penguins have space for him. I think I'd rather give him another year of growth. So I don't think that uh, Pickering, who was the Penguins' first round pick this year, is going to be playing. Is Matheson a downgrade for the Habs on defense? Technically, he's an upgrade by one percentile for even strength defense, but for overall wins above replacement. And that's what matters the most. Wins. You play to win the game. Petrie does give you more. So Matheson is a slight downgrade in that regard, but let's see him on the special teams and stuff like that first as well. Um, Mike Matheson also from Montreal. Did not know that. Is he? Let me see this. Mike Matheson from Montreal. Uh, yeah, from Point Claire. No kidding. Point Claire. There's a great Olympic pool in Point Claire. So maybe we went swimming at the same pool growing up. Thank you, Richard. Very much appreciated. Now we're at 90 people. So I know, I'm sure many people are just searching for this breaking news. Once again, closing off. I want to close it, but we keep getting more people in here. Jeff Petrie and Ryan Paling traded from the Montreal Canadiens to the Pittsburgh Penguins in exchange for Mike Matheson and uh, a 2023 fourth round pick. How much does Matheson make? Well, let me tell you right now, looking at the cap friendly page, uh, and I'll share that with you. Let me share the screen. There we go. Mike Matheson makes $4.875 million for the next four years. So Petrie, who's going to be making $6.25 million for the next three years. Matheson is cheaper, younger, and signed for one more year. Plus, uh, Petrie has a 15-team no-trade clause. Matheson has a eight-team no-trade clause. So a little bit more uh, flexible in terms of that you could move him around. That's also something to be kept in mind. He is a bit more movable if you wanted to. So Penguins are making moves today. That's true. Big moves on their blue line. And thank you very much, Adam. Appreciate you joining the team. I'm sure you'll enjoy a lot of the stuff here on the channel. Take a check, second to check it out if you haven't already, everybody. Especially the, yeah, a lot of defense on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Especially NHL 22 franchise mode. I did a Yuri Slavkovsky career simulation on the YouTube channel. So that's fun to see. A Shane Wright Kraken career simulation is coming soon. Philadelphia Flyers franchise mode. Kraken franchise mode. Atlanta Thrashers 07 dynasty mode. MLB The Show 22 franchise mode. So if you enjoy sports, enjoy hockey, enjoy franchise mode and all the contracts and nitty gritty, I'm sure that will be something you enjoy. So take a second to check out the channel. Thank you everyone for being here. I'll close it out. Now we're at 25 minutes. I know we're at the height of people, but I don't think there's much 
much more that I can say about this trade aside from I'm more content with it than I originally was. I like the, the deal long term as well as short term. It's just that I'm not sure if I like it as much for the Penguins long term. I'm okay with the Penguins for it short term. I'm not sure if I like it for the Penguins long term, not in terms of just ability, but also in terms of restricting themselves cap wise. So that's going to be tough. I don't know if I'd say that Matheson's one of the worst contracts in the league to be a 70th percentile player uh, here from Renault to say that he's, you know, he's a 70th percentile for wins above replacement costing you under 5 million. I don't think I can agree with you on that one. Maybe it's just a bit of jadedness on the years that you've seen. Uh, is there a spot for paling on Pittsburgh? I do believe that there is. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, long term includes a rebuild. So uh, one, two, three, four. Actually, you could look at the uh, depth chart on Pittsburgh for Ryan Paling. I see him slotting in uh, around, you know, somewhere on this fourth line. Take out Kapanen because he's not signed right now. I'm not sure what's up with him. Put Teddy Bluger on that fourth line, maybe. I could see Archibald McGinn Paling as that fourth line, something along those lines. Yeah, but I think he'll definitely still kind of be fighting for a spot a little bit. A couple injuries happen. Before you know it, bang, he's in the top six scoring 60 points. So, you know, the Paling and the Canadians have, uh, the Penguins have a good reputation for doing stuff like that. Paling is absolutely happy about this trade. If I, I would think so. As he'll get new life and not have to fight down in Laval anymore. Uh, yeah, Johan, that's true. Johan Larson, supposedly also a Penguin. So the blue line troubles continue for the Penguins trying to figure out who stays, who goes. I wouldn't be surprised if there are more moves that will happen. So I'll go ahead and end it there. Thank you once again, everybody, for taking the time to listen. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoy the analysis. Leave your thoughts as well down in the comments on YouTube or over on the Discord server where we break all other hockey news and other sporting news and as well as just discussing sports. So if you enjoy that and want to be notified of breaking news and all that stuff, being part of the Discord server would be very helpful. My pleasure, Eric. Thank you for stopping by. Why didn't he work out in Montreal? Is it the coach? Is it the system? Is it him a little bit? He's done well in Laval. Ryan Paling um, uh, with the Laval Rocket has been okay. So it's hard to say why it hasn't really worked out. It's he's, and he's still young. He's still 23. In Laval, he scored six points in seven games this season. He had 25 points in 28 games the season before. So I still think that there's hope for Ryan Paling. Uh, Rem Pitlick signed. Is that true? And uh, more news in the NHL. Look at that. Rem Pitlick signing in uh, in Montreal after he was let go. Rem Pitlick coming back to Montreal. Bang. So Pitlick comes back in. Still looking for Doc. Still looking for Montembeau, Primo, guys like that. Paling has a good shooting percentage. That's true. He's in that 34th percentile, I think, for goals per 60. Yeah. there. No, for even strength offense. 26th for goals per 60. I keep saying I'll end, and then I keep thinking of more things to say. But I think I can finally end it off there. He just, yeah, good point here. Needs ice time. I think Crosby in one year and Latang in the other, in one year and Latang in the other might help fix the mental side. Good point right there. I could see that. So thank you, everybody. I'll end off there. I appreciate you. Be sure to stop by the channel. Looking forward to hearing from you more in the future and breaking more news as it happens, instant analysis and reaction. Appreciate everybody. Enjoy your afternoon and we'll talk soon.